So today we're going to go ahead, log back into our Raspberry Pi. And we're going to come up to the menu here with a little Raspberry on it. And let's go ahead and take a look at the preferences. So I'm going to come down to the Raspberry Pi configuration. Now I've already gone ahead and hooked up the remote desktop. So mine's going to be a little bit laggy, but I think it's going to be much better than pointing a camera at a TV. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look here. Uh, we've got a few options here in the first one. We can change the name, change the host name, or sorry, the password, the host name. I'm going to leave all these options to default right now. I have gone ahead and changed the resolution to 720. Uh, oh, actually, no, I think that is the default resolution. I meant to set it to 720p. And I'm going to set it for that now. And I'm only doing that for recording. Keep in mind that the larger you make your resolution, since this is going to be going over a network, it's going to be much slower and laggier. And we don't want that. But for recording purposes, I am going to go ahead and increase it. And I am going to disable the splash screen. I don't really need it. And sometimes you'll have your screen set up and you'll notice that it doesn't touch the sides. Like you have a black bar going all the way around. Go ahead and disable overscan if you need to. What we really want to look at here are the interfaces. And the two interfaces that I want to turn on is SSH and VNC. I'll come back and play around with the others as we need them for specific videos. But for today, these are the only two we need on. And I'm not sure I'm going to handle that desktop. It's really laggy at this resolution for some reason. That's okay. So I'm going to make some changes. The Raspberry Pi has to be rebooted. That's perfectly fine because the next step is actually going onto our computer and SSHEN. So we'll go ahead and I'll uh, jump over there. Now that we have SSH turned on for our Raspberry Pi, on a Mac, I'm going to go ahead and open up a program, Terminal. On Windows, we're going to have to go ahead and download something like Putty. And we can take a look at that at the end of this video. Up until now, everything's the same anyway, and all the commands will be the same. It's just a different program you're going to be using. I'm going to go ahead, make this full screen. Now I want to go ahead and take that Ethernet cable and attach it from the Raspberry Pi to the back of my Mac. Again, on a Windows-based system, you might need a crossover cable. Now that we have our computer and our Raspberry Pi connected, we can go ahead and type in SSH, our login name, which was Pi, the name of the Pi, which is Raspberry Pi dot local. We'll go ahead, we'll hit enter. And if we've never connected to it before, we're gonna get a message like this. What it's gonna do is go ahead and save a key onto your computer so that next time you connect to your Raspberry Pi, it has a way to identify it. And we can now have secure connection between us and our Pi. So I'll just go type in yes. And now I need the password for my Pi. And if we have not changed it, it should be Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And there we go. We are now connected into the terminal of our Raspberry Pi. Now the first thing I always do almost every day that I log in is type in sudo apt get update. And of course, make sure you spell it right. It's not at, it's app. And I just like to make sure that everything's up to date before I start playing around with stuff. Now, I don't necessarily upgrade every day, or at least every day that I connect to it, but I at least check. And if it's anything major, then I will. Uh, some stuff, I just need to check before I actually go ahead and uh, accept the upgrade. But you shouldn't let your Raspberry Pi get too far behind as far as the updates go. So the next command is sudo apt get upgrade. And it looks like I have absolutely nothing to upgrade. Perfect. So I can SSH in and that menu that we were just in on our Raspberry Pi, where we're going ahead and setting up VNC to enable it and also the SSH, we can access that here by typing sudo raspi dash config. And now we have the ability to move around. So if we come down to the advanced options, let me, see, I'll just, let me just quickly check, make sure there's nothing here we need. I'm not going to change any of these options. Yeah, I'm just going to come down to the advanced. Let's come down to the resolution. And I'm going to be recording in 1080p just because of, well, YouTube. But the problem with that is the bigger the resolution you make it, the slower it's going to respond for you. Remember that now we're communicating over a network and it's a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have a lot of resources to begin with and increasing the screen resolution or even the amount of memory that you're dedicating to the GPU 
takes away from that pool. But again, with that said, I might be able to get away with 720p and just upscale it. Let's see how that looks for this video. So we'll go ahead, we'll accept that. And let's also come down into five. Here's your facing options. And we already know SSH is on because we have it. And the VNC, uh, would you like the VNC to be enabled? Yes, I'm just gonna make sure. I, th I think I did enable it, but just to double check, I wanna make sure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, exit out of here. And we'll do the reboot, which is fine. It's just gonna kick me out. Uh, it's gonna reboot, just keep an eye on your Raspberry Pi when the, that green light stops flashing, you know it's done. Now for as far as clients go to connect to our Raspberry Pi so we can see the, the desktop there, there are several free and really good options for viewing the desktop of our Raspberry Pi. The first one that comes to mind is the Microsoft Remote Desktop Client. If you're on Windows, you can just go ahead, come on over to the Microsoft site and well, you can just search for it if you want. Microsoft Remote Desktop Client and grab it that way. If you're on a Mac, you can grab it from the App Store. This is the one I used to use all the time, but I find myself more and more using real VNC. It's just, I don't wanna say simpler because they're both pretty simple. There's just less fields to fill in. It just seems to have a cleaner interface and it's, it just feels more modern and it's available for a ton of other platforms. So this is the one we're gonna use. So come over to the download link. Of course, the address is realvnc.com. So we'll go ahead, we'll download. Now, as far as the VNC Connect goes, our Raspberry Pi already has that in it. And that's what we've enabled. So we'll go ahead and click on the VNC Viewer. And then go ahead and pick your operating system that you're, that you're running on. This is the machine you're gonna be sitting in front of to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna be using a Mac, so I'm gonna go ahead, download it, just install it, just like any other app. Of course, if you're on Windows, we have one there. There's also a Linux version. Maybe you're sitting in front of a Pi and you wanna to connect to another Pi. Here you go, they've got you covered. They even have a Chrome extension, so if you're not at your computer at home, you can still sign in and connect to it through Chrome. But I haven't exposed it to the outside world yet. And to be honest, for the stuff that we're gonna be working on at the start, we don't need to. But anyway, once it's downloaded, go ahead and install that. And I've got them both here. Here's my Microsoft Remote Desktop and my VNC Viewer. I'm gonna open up the Viewer. And in order to connect to our Raspberry Pi, there's a couple ways we can do it. One is either through the raspberrypi.local. That's the way I usually do it. But some people like to connect through the actual IP address. I've not set mine up to be static, so it could change. But if you wanted to find out what that IP address is, you can just ping your Raspberry Pi. So ping raspberrypi.local. And there we go, we get the IP address. To get out of there, just hit Command Z. But like I said, I just like using the actual name. Provided you haven't changed it, it'll be the exact same as mine. So let's go ahead and connect. And this is the first time I've connected to this device, this Raspberry Pi. So it's gonna go ahead and let me, well, I have a warning saying that it's never connected before. No, am I sure I want to? Yes. Now it's gonna go ahead and ask me for my login credentials, and this is for the Raspberry Pi. And again, if you haven't changed it, it should be Pi, and your password should be Raspberry. No capitals. I'm just gonna hit remember, and we'll sign in, and voila, we are now in the desktop. And you can go ahead and rescale this, or resize it to a maximum size. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and change that, you could come through the settings. Uh, this should be good enough, I think. Mine's at 720p, and what I'm gonna try to do is crop it so that it goes full screen. I might actually have to go ahead and switch it to 1080p, because I want the recordings to be crisp enough that you can actually, well, see what I'm typing. That's gonna be kind of important, right? But for those following along at home, you should be able to get away with the lower resolution. So there we go. We can now connect to it through remote desktop and we can also go ahead and connect to it through SSH. So let's kick back, relax, play a little Minecraft. Let's turn this into a Minecraft channel. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but I do have a Minecraft server if anyone wants to play someday. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in the next video because, well, I'm just gonna ramble. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles.
and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>